Hey folks, today I wanted to talk about the Radeon RX 6700 XT as it's a card that hasn't really gotten a fair shake of the stick in my opinion. Now at this point we all know that PC component prices have jumped into the stratosphere. The RX 6700 XT according to AMD anyway should be a sub 500 quid or 500 dollar card. But in the here and now Prices for any card in the 6700 XT series can be anywhere from about £530 here in the UK all the way up to £850 and that's from just one of the big online retailers here. But mad pricing aside, is the 6700 XT actually a good card? And do the higher tiered, higher priced options offer up anything more than the more reasonably priced offerings? Well, to answer that, I've got two 6700 XTs here today. The latest addition to Sapphire's Pulse lineup and a triple fan, triple slot beast in the form of Power Colors Red Devil. Cards which, while being built around the same Navi 22 XT GPU, are at completely opposite ends of the pricing spectrum. If we take a quick look at the specs, we find 40 compute units in the design on an enhanced RDNA 2 architecture. This gives us 2560 SPs, 160 TMUs and 64 ROPs, very similar to the RDNA 1 based RX 5700 XT on the face of it. The similarities however, it kind of stops there. Whereas the previous generation card came with 8 gigs of GDDR6, the 6700 XT comes with 12. Now this 12 gigabyte figure has come at a cost of a reduced memory bus. As the 6700 XT drops down to a 192 bit bus instead of the 256 bit bus we were familiar with on the 5700 XT. And even with a bump up in memory speed to 16 gigabits per second, there is still a slight memory bandwidth deficit on the face of it. I say on the face of it though, as the 6700 XT it's not just a simple revision or rebrand of a previous card. Even though the 5700 XT and 6700 XT share the same basic GPU configuration and use the same TSMC 7 nanometer process, the GPU on the 6700 XT is actually around 33% larger than the 5700 XT. Thanks in part to the inclusion of dedicated ray tracing accelerator hardware, but also to 96 megabytes of what AMD calls Infinity Cache, which talks to the GPU over a 1024 bit bus and offers up 1.5 terabytes per second of bandwidth. Now this not only mitigates the traditional bus width deficit, but in a lot of cases it will also considerably outperform a static 256 bit bus card. But to test how good or bad the 6700 XT is, I'm going to be putting it up against the 2080 Ti, Nvidia's 3070 and my own RX 6800. So we're going to jump into the games now, which have been run on my overclocked Ryzen 9 3900 XT system, which is equipped with 32 gigs of DDR4 memory. The games were all tested at my monitor's native resolution of 2560 by 1440. Now we're going to kick things off here with Cyberpunk 2077 on the Ultra preset with RT turned off. Now we know how demanding Cyberpunk can be at this stage and only the 6800 manages to hit 60 FPS on average. The 2080 Ti, 3070 and 6700 XT however are all within the same ballpark with only one or two FPS separating them out. Jumping into another Nvidia favoured title in Watch Dogs Legion on the Ultra preset with RT again turned off and unfortunately we see the 6700 XT fall behind both the 3070, the 2080 Ti and the 6800. Now we know that this game really does favour Nvidia cards with the 3070 unusually coming close to the 6800 but there is about a 10% gap here when comparing the 6700 XT to the 3070. Going in the completely opposite direction now with an AMD sponsored title in the form of Godfall on the epic quality setting and this is a really weird one. We already know that the 6800 it totally blitzes the 2080 Ti and the 3070. But when comparing the 6800 which performs immensely well to the 6700 XT, well there's only a 2 FPS gap between these two cards. 
with even the 6700 XT beating the 3070 by a 15 FPS margin on average. Now the 1% lows are a bit more compacted, but it's clear here that the 6700 XT with its higher boost clocks is doing something right. Jumping back in time now to Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the highest quality preset, and again we see the 6700 XT fall into the bottom of the pack. Now, I mean, we're still getting 110 FPS on average, with the 3070 falling closer to the 6700 XT than the 6800, but there is a noticeable gap, and although you're not going to really notice this while playing the game, it is noteworthy. But hey, all four of these cards here perform excellently in what is still a really good looking game. Jumping into Horizon Zero Dawn on the Ultimate Quality preset sees the 6700 XT overtake the RTX 2080 Ti. The average FPS here is also really close to the 3070, but the 3070 does just nick a win here by a few FPS. What is really noticeable though is the gap in the 1% lows. With the 6700 XT returning around 15% better performance on the percentile lows than the 3070. Now if you're locking the game to 60 FPS, you're going to see no difference at all with any of these cards. But if you've got an adaptive sync monitor, you are going to have a smoother time on the 6700 XT than you will with the 3070, despite the 3070 returning higher average FPS. Finally, we've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla on the Ultra preset, and in this title, while the 2080 Ti and 3070 were pretty much neck and neck, and the 6800 pulled well in front, we see that the 6700 XT is actually much closer in performance to the 6800 than it is to the Nvidia cards. A really good win for the 6700 XT here, and I guess it shows how potent the card can be when games are taking advantage of the hardware inside. Now, if we look at the aggregate results for all of these games, the 6700 XT does come out on top of the 2080 Ti, and it draws with the 3070, with the 6800 being a clear tier up. Now, of course, this is all down to the games tested. If we removed Godfall, the 6700 XT is going to fall a bit behind the two Nvidia cards. However, if we turn on Resizable Bar for both the 6700 XT and the 3070, then the 6700 XT would pull ahead again because these cards get a bigger boost when using Resizable Bar than their Nvidia counterparts. So while there is some room for a performance hierarchy to flip depending on the titles you play, what is absolutely clear is that on the whole, the 6700 XT offers up 2080 Ti or 3070 like performance, while only being around 10-15% to slower than the RX 6800, which is a pretty good place to be when we think of how lauded the 3070 was at launch. Now what about our two AIB models? Well, the Pulse is clocked at reference clock speeds, while the Power Color card, well, you get a 4% boost in boost clocks out of the box. AMD has really pushed the 6700 XT hard in its reference form, meaning that there's very little room for AIB models to push clock speeds really high without throwing power consumption completely out the window. It could be done for sure as I could get both cards to boost up a few hundred megahertz, but when really pushing it, the performance returns in terms of FPS, it just didn't really translate into something that was worthwhile. So it's fair to say that the cheaper Pulse card and the Monster Power Color card operate at the same level. Now sure, a larger heatsink and triple fan design of the Power Color card does mean that it can operate quieter than the Pulse, but it's not like the smaller two-slot dual fan setup of the Pulse card struggles to keep things under control. Hotspot temperatures are kept under check, and even on the stock fan curve, they settle in around 80 degrees in my case on the Pulse card, while the Power Color card is a few degrees cooler while spinning its fans at lower speeds. Silicon quality also doesn't seem to be skewed favourably towards the expensive cards either. The Power Color card did need less voltage than the Pulse when pushing the clock speeds above 2.75 GHz, but conversely, when trying out the cards mining Ethereum, which sees us undervolt and dramatically drop clock speeds to around 1100 MHz, it was the Pulse card which could do it at the lower voltages, meaning that a few watts were saved with the Pulse, returning about 46 to 47 megahash per second at around 115 watts compared to the Power Color's 120 watts. 
For reference, both these cards could also hit just shy of 17GB per second on the VRAM, and temperatures were around 64 degrees for the memory on the pulse and 55 degrees C on the power colour, with fans set at a static 55%, which when you consider the thermal limit is about 105 degrees is well under control. So what would I do? Well, for me, the cheaper 6700 XTs, this simply make more sense. Cards like the Pulse perform just as well as the showpiece cards in the real world, and other than not being as flashy or as impressive in a case, you've got to remember that this is AMD's mid-range GPU, and when the dust settles and prices start to normalise, it's still just going to be AMD's mid-range GPU, even if you've paid 800 quid for it. Now I know that I've probably been spoiled a bit managing to snag the Founders Edition 3070 for MSRP, meaning that I got it delivered to my door for around 500 quid. But with FE and reference AMD models no longer really being available, and pretty much all AIB 3070s now costing over 650 quid, if you can pick up a car like the RX 6700 XT Pulse, even at the inflated price of 550 to 600 quid then it's probably the best value you're going to find at this point in time. You're getting 2080 Ti-like performance in the majority of games, and in comparison to the 3070, a 12GB frame buffer, which is going to help going forward, as even now, the 8 gigs on those cards are beginning to creep, and while the RT performance is still behind Nvidia, I do feel that the 12GB frame buffer is much more relevant than having slightly better RT performance in a handful of half-baked RT capable games. Nvidia still has the upper hand when it comes to upscaling with its DLSS technology as AMD has yet to release its alternative, but other than that, I think I'd prefer the money in my pocket from going with a cheaper entry-level SKU 6700 XT over the price pumped 3070 or any higher tiered 6700 XT model. But hey, that's my thoughts on the 6700 XT. Get in the door for as little as possible and you're going to have a great 1440p gaming card, offering performance that just 9 months ago would have set you back over a grand. These cards are available out there and for the 6700 XT at least, stock is definitely more plentiful than with any previous 6000 or 30 series card. So if you want one, be patient and I'm sure you will find it. Just don't pay over the odds for it. I'm going to leave it there for today folks, remember to let me know your thoughts and I'll just say stay safe, take care and I'll see you in the comment section down below and in the next video.